Hello, my name is Jeremy Wagner, and I'm a senior technical writer on the Chrome Developer Relations team focusing on web performance. And in this video, I'm going to go over some of the new insights you can get from field data to help you better troubleshoot slow interactions that are affecting your website's interaction to Next Paint, or INP for short. If you don't know about INP, here's the quick version. IMP is a core web vital metric that assesses a page's overall responsiveness to user interactions by observing the full duration of each and every click, tap, and keyboard interaction that occurs throughout the life cycle of a page. The full duration of an interaction starts from the moment the user initiates it to when the browser finishes updating the user interface in response. IMP is, in milliseconds, typically the single longest interaction that occurred on a page. Responsiveness is a key aspect of the user experience. When pages have good responsiveness, that means the browser quickly presents the visual feedback from interactions. Here, you can see that as the user clicks on parts of this accordion, each section toggles immediately and smoothly. On the other hand, when pages have poor responsiveness, they can be frustrating to use. Here, the user is interacting with the same accordion as before, but in this case, the desired sections don't open immediately when clicked. There is a significant delay which makes the user think the accordion is broken, so the user clicks multiple times. However, all of those click interactions were queued, but delayed because the page itself is not responsive. Once the page can respond, the click interactions in the queue run immediately one after the other, creating a frustrating experience. Here, you can compare and contrast both experiences side by side, and it's clear which one is more reliable, and therefore desirable to use. A page's INP measures and reflects this critical part of the user experience. To ensure that websites provide good experiences, we recommend that at least 75% of page visits have an INP at or less than 200 milliseconds. Anything above 500 milliseconds is considered a poor user experience. If you're curious to see what your website's users are experiencing, Google provides real user data from the Chrome User Experience Report, or CRUX for short. This data includes INP, as well as other metrics, and is collected from Chrome users. It's a convenient starting point that can quickly tell you what your website's INP is, as experienced by its actual users. This data is accessible using PageSpeed Insights by entering a URL. While CRUX is a great tool for seeing if you have IMP issues, it doesn't really tell you what's causing them. As with any other performance metric, we recommend that you measure IMP in the field by collecting this data directly from your users using performance APIs available in JavaScript. This is essential because field data represents a wide variety of real user experiences. And this is true for every performance metric, but it is especially true for IMP because so much of what it measures depends on when the user happens to interact with the page. Without field data, you can't accurately assess the quality of your website's user experience, and in the case of IMP, troubleshooting slow interactions becomes much easier when you do have it. WebVitals.js is a library that you can use to observe all core web vitals, plus additional metrics, for real users. You can use it on your website to assess the quality of its user experience by not only monitoring your website's INP, but also to determine the root causes behind slow interactions. If you're not familiar with WebVitals.js, let's start with the basics and focus on the simplest bits of data it provides. Every method available in this library reports data for a particular metric and accepts a callback as an argument. The callback provides an object of data for that metric. In this example, a callback is passed to the onIMP method, which logs IMP data to the console when the user leaves the page. This includes the name of the metric, INP in this case, the page's INP in milliseconds, and finally, the threshold that value falls within. Now, the previous example just logs this data to the console, but you have to send this data somewhere for it to be truly useful. This code sample shows how you could do that to an endpoint on your own server, while also including the path name for the current page for aggregation purposes. If you're using a third-party analytics tool that doesn't collect data for Core Web Vitals, refer to their documentation for how to send custom metric data. After a period of time, you'll have collected enough field data that you can analyze it. Now, your analysis could be as simple as 
dumping your collected field data into a spreadsheet to calculate your page's INP at the 75th percentile, or you could go further and develop a custom dashboard, or instead use any number of available open source tools to do this for you. While reporting your page's INP is useful, that alone won't give you much of an advantage over Crux. You'll likely want additional information that can help you debug issues more efficiently. A separate build of webvitals.js, known as the attribution build, gives you that information. There are many diagnostics you can get from the attribution build, and they're all exposed on an additional object in the callbacks arguments. These bits of data help you answer important questions, such as, what element did the user interact with? When did they interact? What did the browser do in response to the interaction? And importantly, what else was happening on the page at the time of the interaction? One valuable piece of information to start with is the interaction target, which is a selector string that points to the element that the user interacted with that was responsible for the page's INP. By collecting this, you're saving yourself a lot of time by not having to poke around on your page trying to figure out which interaction was the slowest one. You can also get the type of interaction, which will be pointer or keyboard. This is just the beginning of what you can get from the attribution build, though. Recently, the Chrome team shipped the Long Animation Frames API, or LOAF for short, starting in version 123. More recently, the Chrome team has added LOAF data to the attribution build in version 4 of the Web Vitals JavaScript library. And as you'll quickly see, LOAF can provide great insight into different parts of an interaction and why they were slow. Interactions consist of three parts, beginning from the point when a user initiates an interaction with the page up to the moment the user interface is updated. When you find an interaction that's slow, it's natural to think the code you've written in its event handler callbacks is the main culprit. The time it takes for that code to run to completion is known as the processing duration. While the processing duration is certainly the central player of any interaction, it's only one of three contributors to the interaction's full duration. There's another part of the interaction that takes place before event handlers begin to run that you'll also need to account for, and that's the input delay. The input delay is the period of time beginning when the user starts an interaction up to the point when the event handler callbacks for that interaction begin to run. Then finally, there's the presentation delay. This is the time it takes from the moment the interaction's event handler callbacks finish to the time it takes the browser to finish the rendering work required to update the user interface. Slow interactions are caused by excessive time spent in any one of these three parts, but some can spend significant time in two parts or even all three. Whatever your situation may be, here are some common causes of slow interactions and how you can use webvitals.js and the data it provides from LOAF to find the cause. Interactions with high processing duration values delay the rendering that the browser needs to do to produce the next frame. More than that, some interactions can involve code in multiple event handlers, sometimes from sources you may not have expected. So it makes sense to start by measuring the processing duration of interactions to figure out whether you need to focus on this area. WebVitals.js reports the processing duration for the interaction responsible for a page's INP. And if you notice high processing duration values, LOAF can tell you what event handler in which script was responsible for it. LOAF will give you a lot of data you can use to troubleshoot these types of problems, starting with the invoker type, which in these cases will always be event listener. You'll also get the invoker itself, which in this case is an element selector plus the event type, on click in this case. More than that, you'll get the exact location of where the event handler code originated from, starting with the URL of the script that it ran from, the character position where the event handler callback was located in your code, as well as the name of the function that was responsible for the high processing duration. All of this is beneficial because it's not only your code that can have long running event handlers. Some third party script vendors, for example, attach their own event listeners to elements on your page. This means that if your own code was running quickly, then LOAF will report the third party event handler code so you can follow up and figure out next steps. Long processing durations are caused by long tasks that block the main thread. 
An effective way of dealing with them involves a strategy known as yielding, where you instruct the browser using JavaScript to pause execution of the current task to allow other interactions and rendering work to be done on the main thread before resuming that task. Yielding can be an effective optimization. Taboola took this approach on their platform to break up long tasks so that sites embedding their code could be more responsive. As a result, Taboola's publisher partner websites saw an IMP improvement of up to 36%. This underscores the fact that slow interactions may not even be attributable to your own code, such as from third-party script vendors that provide valuable functionality like consent management, for example. And data from LOAF can help you figure this out more quickly than ever before. Some third-party vendors have already started to use this data to address problems on their own platforms, and we hope others will follow suit. While an interaction's processing duration is an important focus, there's more to an interaction than that, such as the input delay. To recap, this is the time between when a user has initiated the interaction to the time that its event handlers begin to run. Input delays can never be zero. It takes some amount of time for the operating system to recognize the input and then pass it to the browser to be queued. However, JavaScript is single-threaded by default. If a lot of work is happening on the main thread, long input delays can result when the user interacts with the page at a time when the main thread was blocked, and that delays the interaction from proceeding altogether. You'll want to be able to measure input delays to figure out if this is why an interaction was slow. WebVitals.js can tell you the input delay for the interaction. While this number itself is useful, the next question is, what else was going on in the page that caused the long input delay? Long input delays can commonly occur as a page is loading, when the main thread is often busiest. They can also occur after the page is loaded if scripts continue to run lots of tasks. It can be complicated, but attribution from LOAF can make this an easier question to answer. You can figure this out in webvitals.js by getting the LOAF entry, then by accessing the script attribution object within it. In that object, there's an invoker type property which describes the type of work associated with that script that was done on the main thread. Along with the invoker type, you can also get the source URL of the script responsible. In this case, we can see a script named app.js that may be worth breaking up into smaller chunks to avoid long JavaScript evaluation tasks on the main thread. However, there are other causes of input delays, and they can occur even after the page is finished loading. These causes tend to be from other task sources, such as recurring timers that run code on some interval, or from prior interactions that were queued and are still processing. In this case, you'll see invoker types other than classic script or module script. These invoker types may be event listener, which was due to a prior interactions event handler code running at the time the user began the interaction, or user callback, which was due to a recurring timer, such as from a set interval call. There are also promise-based causes, which are from code that was scheduled to run much earlier, but resolves at the time the user interacts with the page. One example of this could be an expensive fetch call processing large amounts of data retrieved from the network. The last mile for an interaction is the presentation delay, which is the duration between when an interaction's event handlers finish running up until the browser updates the user interface to show the visual result of the interaction. An example of this might be if a user clicks on a button to open a flyout menu, code runs in an event handler that changes CSS properties, which updates the page layout to reflect the menu's open state. This work takes some time, sometimes too much time, and that's something you'll want to look out for as well. WebVitals.js reports the presentation delay for the interaction responsible for the page's IMP. And if your page's IMP is not within the good threshold and a significant chunk of that time is spent in this phase, then this is probably where you might want to focus your efforts. A common cause of long presentation delays is when the browser has to spend a lot of time calculating styles and performing layout work when the page's presentation changes as the result of an interaction. Style recalculation is when the browser applies CSS rules in a style sheet to a page, and layout is when the geometry of the page is calculated. Common causes of excessive rendering work are when CSS selectors are too complex and when the page contains too many DOM nodes. The latter of these is quite significant, 
because as the number of DOM nodes on a page increases, so too does the rendering work required to update that page. LOAF through webvitals.js can help you to sniff out these types of problems through the rendering timings it provides. You can use these timings to calculate the total duration of a style and layout operation associated with a slow interaction by first collecting the start time of the task that began the long animation frame. Next, we get the duration of the frame. This time, however, does not include painting and compositing time, but ends immediately after style and layout. We can calculate the timestamp of when style and layout finished by adding the start time and the duration of the frame. And from there, you can get the timestamp of when the style and layout operation for the long animation frame began. Then finally, the total duration of the style and layout work required to produce the next frame can be calculated by subtracting the style and layout start timestamp from the frame's ending timestamp. From there, you can dive into any script attribution information to figure out what caused the long presentation delay. Tracking all this stuff for your website can take some time and effort, but real user monitoring providers, or RUM for short, provide services that can do this work for you. Some providers are already surfacing LOAF attribution data in their reporting, and we're looking forward to seeing more of them report LOAF in their products in the future so that more websites can benefit from it. Whether you gather this data yourself or rely on a RUM provider, you'll likely want to learn more about what you can do to improve your website's IMP. To help, we've launched an entire collection of IMP-related documentation on web.dev that details a larger workflow, including how to test and reproduce interactions in your development environment, as well as a significant number of articles that cover the various causes behind slow interactions. And finally, if you're interested in code samples to help you learn more about how to use webvitals.js to debug IMP and find opportunities for improvement, we've launched a companion code lab to this video to help you do just that. Give it a look. And with that, thank you for your time, and good luck out there in the field.